Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Harmony TV. I'm Michelle Aspinwall, this is my assistant Kristen. So happy to have you on here, whether you're watching, watching live or watching the replay. Last week, I started a three-part series on sleep, sleep in midlife, what it means to have good sleep, why good sleep is so important. Last week, let me just recap a little bit about last week. So last week, I began the series, we talked all about melatonin, melatonin being the, the predominant hormone that helps not only um, with sleep, but with many other elements in the body, major antioxidant. It is part of our diurnal rhythm. It's in conjunction with serotonin. Melatonin is produced in the pineal gland in the brain. Serotonin is produced mainly in the gut. And the two are interconnected by the vagus nerve. I talk about the vagus nerve all the time. It is a super, super important nerve. And you know our gut is our second brain and our brain is intimately connected to our gut. So what we do in one affects the other intimately. And last week I talked all about what it means to have good sleep, how you can get good sleep, and why melatonin is so protective and why in midlife it is a very crucial hormone to think about, to test, and if it is too low to understand and get to the reason why. And just supplementing with melatonin may not be enough. I didn't talk so much about that, but that's something I wanted to bring up this week. Now, uh, so that was week one. And I also gave ladies, um, ladies and men, uh, of course, always, I gave you guys some tips and tricks as to help get yourself prepared to have a good night's sleep. And then also what it means if you're not getting, having trouble falling asleep, what it means and how to utilize your body's natural diurnal rhythm. That was last week. So if you didn't, if you missed last week, go back and catch week one because today is part two of our three part series. Today is day two and day two is all about what if you wake up in the middle of the night and you have trouble falling back asleep. So let me define this. What I'm not talking about is when you roll over or um, you know you hear a sound outside or a dog barks or something like that and you wake up for a split second and then you kind of wake, you go back to sleep. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is truly being woken up for you know, between 15, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, or up for the night and can't get back to sleep. That is actually what I'm talking about when I talk about waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to sleep all the way through the night, which means you don't wake up feeling rested. Next week, we're gonna talk about tired and wired and waking up feeling rested and all about, <laughs> this is all about the middle of the night. <laughs> Speaking of dogs. I have that problem, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> It's so funny. And, you know, a lot of us are mothers or have been mothers or have, have had young children. So this is a common occurrence where you get woken up in the middle of the night. And what I want you to know is, ladies, getting good sleep, whether it means falling asleep quickly, making sure you're able to sleep all the way through the night, and making sure you're able to wake up feeling rested. These are all integral components to your body functioning at its mass, maximum capacity. And part of functioning at this capacity means that you are detoxing, naturally allowing the organs and every organ in the body detoxes at a different time of day. Some of them in the middle of the night, some of them, you know, more early in the morning, some of them later in the afternoon. They're all, we're always detoxing, but the middle of the night is a, is a crucial detoxing. And that's when our major organs detox. So like the heart, there, in traditional Chinese medicine, they, there's an organ clock, what they call an organ clock, and there's different times of day that the organs actually detoxify or you know, quiet down or relax or process emotion. And the heart being one of them around midnight, which is why it's so important to get to sleep before midnight, uh, one of the reasons. And then the liver being uh, predominantly detoxing between one and three, and the liver is connected to the small intestine. So have you ever noticed, ladies, that if you have, you know, an evening where you go out and you have many drinks with friends, do you realize that you have no trouble falling asleep, but then you find yourself with a racing heart and awake, potentially awake for one to two hours in the middle of the night or not very restful sleep in the middle of the night? This has to do with your liver. 
because of course we all know our livers have to with alcohol they have to our liver will prioritize alcohol above all else above you know xenoestrogens or environmental toxins or you know tonifying the blood anything like that the liver will take control and do the most detrimental thing to our health which is alcohol first so that's what the liver is doing in the world and i mean it's one of the things the liver has you know hundreds of functions but one of them is to detoxify so this is why on day one i said i really paid a lot of attention to alcohol because it is something in midlife when we start to have we start to commune with friends more often because the kids are usually older and or we're going out more often with our partners or with friends or family or whatever and alcohol is just ever present this is one of the areas that i see that women tend to have you know between one and three drinks more often during the week than not and this is a time of life when alcohol consumption can be for some of us uh can be really harmful like harmful is kind of an intense word but it can be really sort of disharmonizing to the liver which is processing and doing a lot now what i didn't talk about last week very much was emotions in the middle of the night, these, these times when these organs are kind of, you know, detoxifying and really processing, they're also processing emotions. They're processing emotional situations or emotions that are coming through your body. They're also processing that. So one of the elements between one and three, if you're waking up, is that potentially there's something that's not, that's angering you or something that's causing frustration or something that's causing potentially like anger, frustration, rage, um, like a heightened intensity, right? Of something that's not quite right. And the liver is the organ responsible for managing that kind of emotion. So you want to check in with relationships. You want to check in with what's going on at work. Are you feeling fulfilled in your career? Are you feeling fulfilled at home? And in, in maybe you're, you know, maybe you've taken time off of work to raise the kids. Like, those feelings are going to come up in the middle of the night between one and three. So first you're going to check in. You're going to see, is the room cool enough? Are you being woken up by young children or children in general? Is your partner waking you up? Potentially you have a partner that's kind of a, an active sleeper or a partner who potentially snores or, you know, maybe your partner has a sleep apnea machine or something like that. These are all things to sort of check in or a pet. That's another thing pets wake people up they're up and down in the night and i cannot stress enough if you are a co-sleeper with your pet and it's chain you know it's it's affecting how you sleep through the night this is something to change right now because although it might be really cozy and feel really good to sleep with your pet long term ladies long term over time this kind of behavior of being interrupted by whatever it is, partner, child, pet, temperature, alcohol, whatever. Long term, this kind of compounding effect to your health can lead to detrimental health issues down the line. It can lead to compromising your immune system. It can lead to, you know, your brain not allowing it to detoxify. So your lymphatic system tends to, to not work as well, which is going to create inflammation in the brain. We don't want that. We want to we want to age with grace. We want to have longevity and vitality in every area. And brain health is one of them. So that is another thing to consider. Now, something I didn't um, talk about very much is the, I talked a little bit about it last week, was about food and food choices in the middle of the night. So between one and three in particular, there are some women. So if you're one of those women who are more in the type A category, maybe you were like super task oriented. You like to make lists. You like to be on top of things. You like to exercise five or six times a week and you like to be trim and lean and strong. And those are all wonderful things. But if you are not sleeping through the night, because you're waking up and you're not sure, like you've gone through the checklist and none of the things I talked about before are the things that are affecting you, you might look at, are you getting enough complex carbohydrates in your last meal, your dinner meal of the day? Because there's some women that I work with who they are eating basically only protein or protein and vegetables for dinner, which is 
you know, of course, for some women, really healthy and for other women, because, right, we all know this, right? There's no one diet. There's no one thing that's right for everybody. Every woman is unique. Every woman has their own set of situation. Their body responds a certain way. We are all unique, individual, bio, energetic components, right? So if you're possibly waking up and you've checked all that, look at your carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate consumption. So what do I mean by complex carbohydrates? So what I'm not talking about is pasta, rice, potatoes, although potatoes can kind of fluctuate between, you know, both complex and simple carbohydrates, depending on the quality. So I'm not talking about pasta, bread, rice, things like that. I'm talking about complex carbohydrates like root vegetables, like um, nuts, although nut are, nuts are fat and protein. They also, some nuts like cashews have um, a higher concentration of carbohydrates. Also, are you getting enough fat in your diet? Because there's a relationship between fat and vitamin D. And that's like, Kristen, you should write this down. It's like another talk for another day is vitamin D. I want to do a whole talk on vitamin D because I think there's a big misconception about vitamin D and how if you just pop your supplement, that's the way. All right. Um, so you want to make sure you're getting good fats and good complex carbohydrates. Now, all vegetables are, carb are carbohydrate. They, they, that's the way they process in the body. But complex carbohydrates, you want to have a certain proportion of those. Um, and the way that they process in the body helps to calm a cortisol spike in the middle of the night. So that is the thing to look at. Are you getting enough complex carbohydrates in your last meal if you're somebody who tends to wake up? Now, what I'm not saying, ladies, is to basically just give up on protein and green vegetables or, you know, leafy vegetables or whatever and go for, you know, a giant mound of roast potatoes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is continue eating your good protein, your good fat, your good vegetables, and add a small amount of cooked complex carbohydrates. That's one thing. Another thing is look at are you eating lots of raw, uncooked food at dinner? So we all know, I love talking about food. I could talk about food from now until the end of time. It is something that's so exciting, so dynamic, so different for each and every woman out there. Raw food takes longer to digest. So cooked food is already partially digested. How well you chew, how well you process your food, how well you assimilate vitamins and nutrients in your digestive system, determines how hard your digestive system has to work. So we wanna make sure that we are, um, that our food is through the primary digestive system before we go to sleep, because that can impact, okay? So if you have a late, for example, if you have a late dinner, and that dinner is comprised of some alcohol, some simple carbs and some complex carbs and a little bit more alcohol and not a lot of protein and then a dessert and then maybe you're up past midnight you can see where all of these compounding elements can affect your sleep over time right or at least that night and possibly the night after because remember what you do during the day sets the tone for how well you sleep at night and how well you sleep at night sets the tone for what you then crave the next day right so understanding that it's this cycle, it's this yin and yang cycle of what you eat, how you sleep, how you react the next day, that's all this cycle. That's why everything is connected. No one system in the body gets broken alone. No one system malfunctions by itself. It's always interconnected with the other systems in the body. So that is the one to three. Now let's talk about the three to five. This is the time of the lungs, and the lungs are connected to the bladder. So again, I'm going back to the organ clock of the traditional Chinese medicine. So the organ clock is important, and it's hugely beneficial because this is when a lot of women wake up and they think they have to pee. And we do have to pee. We go long amounts of time, and then we wake up, we roll over, and we feel the sensation of having to use the bathroom, right? Remember, the bladder is a muscle. And I want you to practice, and I know that I'm going to get some eye rolls on this one, but I want you to practice ex exercising or not exercising. So not exercising that muscle and allowing yourself to roll over, take some deep 
rhythmic breathing. So that's breathe in for four, hold for two, breathe out for four. Some serious breathing and just allowing yourself to calm yourself and go back to sleep. It is possible, but you first have to believe it's possible and then you have to practice the breathing and then you have to allow, give yourself many times to try it before you say it doesn't work. Because this is the time when a lot of women wake up, they have to pee, they get up, they see the light, the light activates, as I talked about on week one, the light activates the eyes because the sun is probably coming up or it's starting to get a little more light or maybe you have an alarm clock in your room that's super bright with an LED light, not a red, not red numbers, but white, like bright white numbers. All that light is gonna activate this, the waking cycle in your eyes. So then they wake up, they go to the bathroom, they can't fall back asleep. And then you're tired come one, two, three in the afternoon. Do you see how this cycle starts to play in? Um, the other, the energetic component of the lungs, the lungs are connected to the skin. So things that are bothering us, like emotionally, now this isn't about anger and frustration. This is more about... Um, things happening in life that can be upsetting. So maybe you're having like a disagreement with your spouse. Maybe something's upsetting you about your aging parents. Maybe one of your kids is having an issue like at school or something. This is when, um, this is when you, you're awakened because of the emotional capacity and how the lungs deal with the emotions. It's the breath of life, right? You know, when you're deeply upset and you take a deep breath, or you're upset and you have a big sigh, that's all connected. Everything in the body has a physiological component and an emotional component. And that's why these two things, when you put them together, when you study them as a whole, you get the whole picture, you get the full picture around. Kristen, do you have questions? Have I forgotten something? Did I leave something out? I have a question that actually relates not only to this week, but also last week. Oh, good. Um, we have not talked about caffeine and how that relates to the sleep. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up. So, okay, ladies, stimulants. I've talked about stimulant as alcohol, but I haven't talked about caffeine. Now, um, two things about caffeine. The more caffeine you drink, the harder it is to fall asleep, and sometimes the lighter your sleep is in the night, and sometimes you get less deep sleep because you stay more in the, R in the REM sleep, in the REM sleep, right? So one of the things to understand is making sure that your ratio of deep sleep, REM sleep and light sleep, it's a good ratio, okay? And there's ways that when I work with women privately, there's ways that we track sleep and it's really interesting. And it's one of the things I completely love to geek out on. It's like, you guys know me, I'm an integrated biohacker. I use all kinds of tools and um, tracking my sleep is like so exciting to me. I like really telling about my personality here. But um, anyway, so getting back to stimulants. So caffeine is one of those things. Alcohol is a stimulant. It stimulates and then it, you're, it's kind of a downer. Uh, caffeine's the opposite. So caffeine gives you, so it, it constricts blood flow, which makes blood flow faster. And it gives you that alert feeling, right? But the thing that people don't understand is that, that the body has to process and expel caffeine. So it takes for some people, and this is all has to do with genetics, right? And it's kind of, well, it's a lot of things. It's age, it's genetics, and it's quality of whatever you're drinking, right? So like if you're, I, let's assume that everyone's drinking really high quality coffee, not the crappy stuff that like comes in a container is super cheap. I'm talking like high quality beans, because we all know, right, that coffee is like a high mold crop. So you know, anybody who has allergies or who has a tendency for like post nasal drip or sinus issues, I always ask them, what is your, what is the quality of your coffee and how much do you drink and how often do you drink it during the day? Because it definitely contributes to the biofilms in the body, which is like a whole other conversation. But it's one of those things that, you know me, Kristen, I can't give a simple answer. Like, I mean, God forbid, <laughs> right? Um, but it's one of the things I talk about a lot in Feeding Over 40. For those of you who have taken my program, Feeding Over 40, you know that I go really deep into coffee. And coffee definitely disrupts sleep. So it either will disrupt someone. Very few women that I've ever tested and worked with has coffee not been, been an issue. Meaning when we test them, they, they have good melatonin levels. They sleep all the way through the night, waking up feeling rested. 
and they have they don't have any issues with allergies or histamine okay so and i'm I, when i say rare i mean like one or two like i can count them on one hand and not including my thumb so the majority of women either do better with a good quality coffee so they switch from like you know regular grocery store brand to a better quality or they reduce their quantity or they change the timing of when they have it or some combination. Now, the thing, here's the interesting thing. As we age, there's most of us have a genetic um, predisposition that we process caffeine slower. So it means that you get that super quick jolt for like the first two hours or so, like 90 minutes to two hours. And then it starts to wear off and you just, you feel awake and alert, but you're not like revved, re waiting to go, right? Like that's like the first, the beginnings of it. But what you don't understand is that caffeine needs to be processed. And sometimes the processing is 14 hours. Now think about it. If you have a coffee after lunch, 14 hours, so one o'clock, 14 hours is three or four in the morning. So hello, if you're having trouble staying asleep through the night, you could have a genetic either predisposition or a genetic variant that means that you're going to take longer to process coffee, especially as you age. This means the closer you get to menopause or postmenopause, that's when that variant is really gonna rear its head because again, you don't have all these hormones raging at the levels that they were working in perfect tandem harmony doing what they do beautifully right so this is why i work with women privately and in groups to help them understand all these various components because getting good sleep is enormously important to reducing inflammation especially inflammation in the brain making sure your lymphatic system drains properly and effectively because if your cells if your organs are swimming in gross sledge. It doesn't matter how clean your diet is. It doesn't matter how good your bioidentical hormones are. It doesn't matter how well you sleep. You have to drain it out, right? So that's something else we do. And then the last thing is really understanding how to combine foods strategically so you're getting the most nutrient-dense foods for your unique constitution. So I feel like I answered the coffee question. Which but made... Now I have another question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How please. do you drain sludge out of your body <laughs> that is going you would answer the coffee question but now i have i, have I know right <laughs> that's a good question i this is something that i've only recently like in the past six months gone deep and i've been working with a particular practitioner on myself to help me working with um okay i'm just gonna throw it out there but we're not gonna talk about it fully today but for anybody out there who's had any kind of major surgery or has any major scars, if you haven't worked on that scar tissue, it is affecting the way your lymphatic system works. I will be doing something with this in the future, but I don't have enough, I don't feel knowledgeable enough to really go deep into it now. But there are particular massage techniques, there are particular breath techniques, and this is, this is legit and real. I'm talking like, years of chronic pain can be alleviated from doing very localized specialized massage on your own body with very specific techniques that are unbelievable and it's not like it, this is not like going to a masseuse and having someone give you a massage this is targeted and specific and i'll be talking about that more in the future but i'm so glad you brought that up i just couldn't let you say you need to drain the sludge out of your body without without addressing it for everyone <laughs> It's very true, but I will say this, on a, just a general localized level, there's a couple things you can do that will help move your lymphatic system very easily, and that will help you sleep. One of which, so there's two things I'm gonna mention, three things I'm gonna mention. The first one is dry brushing. So I should do, Kristen remind me, I should do a thing on dry brushing. Um, dry brushing is at first very uncomfortable, and, but then after you do it for like a month and you get accustomed to it, it's like you can't imagine life before it. And I mean, I'm this is full on me talking from experience. Dry brushing is incredible. It not only changes the texture of your skin, it helps with um, a lot of different like skin issues, which I talked about in an earlier episode, like skin tags and moles. And then the last thing it does is it helps to activate and move the lymphatic system. So that is the thing you can do right now that every woman on the planet should be doing. 
using a loofah sponge to some extent, or you can buy loofah, loofah like pads that are long. So you're going like this kind of like back and forth, mm -hmm. or you can have one that's like on a hand thing. So you're going in a circular motion, going down, you want to work towards the heart. So you want to start at the top and work down. And then you start at the bottom and work up to, towards your heart. You're always moving towards the heart. And then there's also ones where you hold them and then you use them that way. So any kind of loofah sponge, obviously the more natural, the better, meaning it shouldn't be some kitschy color. It should be like that natural creamy color of um, loofah. Okay. I have an actual like dry brush. Like it's an actual brush for dry so brushing. Brushes are good, but they're not as great as a loofah. Loofah is going to feel like scratchy. It's going to be uncomfortable. It should feel slightly uncomfortable, especially on the stomach. Or oh, the brush is uncomfortable. So it's probably working well. <laughs> okay, good. Then it's doing its job. If it's slightly uncomfortable, it's doing its job. Um, so that's number one. Number two is uh, bouncing. So any kind of rebound, so any kind of bouncing action, that's moving the lymphatic system as well. So if your kids have a trampoline out back, or if you have one of those small rebounders, or there's classes where, I mean, I've seen some of the coolest videos where women are doing insane rebounding to like music and it's all synced up. And I'm in such awe of women who do that. Like I, there's no way, I mean, I could do it. I suppose if I spent time doing it, but it's, it's awesome. YouTube, YouTube is like <laughs> unbelievable. Um, that's number two. And number three is climbing steps because the action of hitting something and lifting up and hitting something and moving yourself up and down which is kind of similar to rebound. It takes longer with climbing steps, but it's the same principle. So that's another thing that can move the lymphatic system very safely and effectively. And ladies, climbing steps is also really great for bone density. Just putting that out there, because you know me, I have to give you all the goods. Um, okay. Lungs, supporting the lungs, breath work. So breath work is enormously important and it also breath work also helps to unblock the diaphragm, which again, I'm just starting to like enter this, this realm of really grasping the importance of breath work. I mean, I've done, I've done my share of yoga. I've done my share of breath and yoga class. I'm talking like next level breath work. And if your diaphragm is locked, you are not moving your lymphatic system from the neck from, from here down. It's just not, and that this is your brain, it's your lymphatic system starts up here and it moves downward, right? So you want to make sure that you're moving the lymph all the time. All right. So that's what I want to say about that. Oh, breath work. So I wanted to give you some simple tools for breath work that you can do both when you're trying to get to sleep. And also if you wake up and you're having trouble falling back asleep. Now this also works ladies if you're one of those women who tends to have hot flashes, one of the things you can do is you can use your breath. Now, I'm not someone who has suffered from hot flashes. I've had an occasional flash here and there in the middle of the night, um, not to the point of night sweats, but like every once in a while, if I have one or two glasses of alcohol at dinner, um, that's usually when it triggers for me a, a, a moment where I wake up from you know, feeling hot. But generally, I don't, that is not something um, that I may have to manage or worry about. But breath work, when that does happen, what I look to are two different things. In, in breath work is one of them. And then, you know, spritzing with some sort of like a peppermint hydrosol or a peppermint like spray has helped me um, enormously. Although I just, I, like I said, I don't, I, I've, to I've told that to other women, it helps them, but I myself, I don't, I don't have that issue. Breath work. Let's do some breath work. Let's do this together. What we're going to do is we're going to put one hand on our lower belly. Okay. So the breath should go all the way down to the belly. A lot of women we've been trained and we like to suck in because we've got this whole vision of like, what does out the outline of our body look like? And I'm here to tell you that that is not helping you rhythmically breathe and relax those muscles. Okay. Cause we're over tensing the lower muscles and not, and we're only breathing up high and not getting oxygen down low. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our, our hand on our lower belly and we're going to feel it expand. So as we breathe in, the whole belly is going to expand. And then as we breathe out, you're going to feel your whole belly contract. 
Now, in between that, you're gonna hold the breath for four seconds. So the goal here is to breathe in for six, hold for four, and breathe out for 12. Doing this entirely through your nose. Again, you guys know I'm an integrative biohacker. I love, love, love hacking into the system and utilizing breath in a thousand different ways. And breath and heart health and nitric oxide, oh my God, I'm going so off topic, it's ridiculous. But breathing through your nose means you're getting more nitric oxide, which is super important for the heart. It means the heart health is, you're just, you're exercising the heart in the most profound ways. This is another talk on the heart, but we're gonna do breath. So put your hand on your belly. We're gonna breathe in for six counts, breathe in. Hold for four. Then breathe out for 12. Now, if you notice, if the breathing out for 12 was tricky, it's because you're not utilizing the lower abdominal muscles to actually contract the air out of the lower regions of the body, right? So you probably can do seven or eight seconds and that gets you to your diaphragm, but the last four to five seconds are gonna be using and contracting those stomach muscles. Ladies, if you use those muscles, they will pull in and be tighter. They're also super good for hip health as well as sacral and root, which are connected obviously and of course to our vaginal health. So breathing, breath, so, so important. Um, okay. Kristen, any, did I forget anything? Did yes. should I, I did. <laughs> okay. You talked about tracking sleep, but yes. how do you track sleep? What are oh, ways you recommend tracking sleep? Great question. I'm so glad you said that. Okay. So when I work with women privately, one of the elements that I ask women to do, if they're up for it, is I ask them to purchase an aura ring. O U R A. Now I make no money from this. Anything I plug in here, I'm not connected to anyone. I don't make any, I make money on a couple of herbs, but I, I so rarely plug them because I don't know, I, I always forget, but I don't make any money. I'm not affiliated with these companies at all. I just value their products. I value their science and I value the technology. Understanding and tracking your sleep is one of the best things and ways you, you can understand what your body is doing at night, which helps you understand hormonally what's happening. And it helps me to help you target certain disharmonies in your body, in your life, so that we can optimize. So this is an aura ring. So I wear this blue, this black band all the time. Um, the only reason I don't wear it is if it's charging. So it's very different from like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch because it not only tracks steps, but it tracks your heart rate, your body temperature, and your heart rate variability. And all of these elements are very important. And um, overnight, while you're sleeping, it gives you an indication of how often you move around. So like, if you're super active, we wanna know that. Um, that means you're not getting good quality sleep or you're uncomfortable, um, which is very important to understand because that helps with food sensitivity. Um, quality of breath, so that's gonna, that's gonna vary um, your heart rate variability. And then body temperature, which is going to talk about recovery and um, how much you're moving, how much you're not moving, and understanding your deep sleep, your REM sleep, and your light sleep, which are all very important. And there's a, there's a good ratio. There's good timings. There's all sorts of things that I like to look at with women in regard to their sleep so I can help them optimize and get the best sleep, the, not only... Because it, we're not, it's not always about sleeping nine or 10 hours. It's really about the quality of your sleep. And that can come from seven hours or it might need to come from nine hours. But the quality of your sleep does not necessarily mean quantity. There are some nights where I get seven and a half hours and I get more deep sleep than I do if I get eight and a half or nine hours of sleep. And that's because I track. And the only way I know that is because I have an aura ring and I track my sleep. And it also can help you understand your immune system a little bit, which is kind of interesting. And it also helps you with fertility. So anyone who is kind of like wondering about fertility, 
or thinking about fertility or, I mean, usually that's not my audience, but I'm just putting it out there. Um, you can track uh, through body temperature some of uh, ovulation. So that's the last thing. Again, no affiliation, but a great tool <laughs> as long as you know how to read the data and know what to do with the data. Again, it's not enough just to test, right? Like I use the Dutch test. Um, I have a program, a, a three session program with the Dutch test. I'm very specific. I look at very specific things. I don't obviously don't prescribe hormones. That's a doctor's job. What I do is I help women really optimize their systems of their body so that bioidentical hormones, they need the least amount. And then we, we know that the body is packaging them up and expelling them efficiently and effectively. It's not enough ladies to just keep adding more to the pile. If the body isn't packaging and getting them out, then we don't want estrogen dominance because that can, can contribute to estrogenic cancers and we don't want that. Um, it also can contribute to stress and all sorts of problems that this isn't about today. But if you are somebody, ladies, if you are someone who has trouble staying asleep at night and you've tried all the things and you're downloading all the freebies and you're reaching out and you follow me and whatever, and you want to take this to the next level, meaning you want someone who's going to listen to you, going to take what you say to me seriously and want actionable results, reach out. There's always something I can create or something that I already have that's available to you. And the women who work with me get results. That is my goal. My goal is results. My goal is not to just hang out. My goal is results always and forever. Although I do love hanging out with my clients. They're always amazing women. So Kristen's going to put in the comments the link if you want to reach out and have any kind of testing. Or if you have questions, you can always shoot us an email or DM me. And, you know, I love getting questions and comments because then I can create more Harmony TVs that are geared to the things that you want and need to know. So, ladies, this concludes day two of my three-day sleep cycle talk. The next one, the third one, our final one will be what happens if you are one of those women who's wired and tired. You have trouble waking up and then you are potentially not rested once you do wake up or you have trouble falling asleep because you're wired. This is a whole nother set of sleep conundrums and I'm gonna talk about all of that next week. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks everyone. Bye.